G'day everybody and welcome to what feels like a very long overdue episode of Modern Math Carnage. My name's DJ and thank you so much for joining us. Now today, we are going to get started on the Dodge 106C. Very excited to finally get into this thing. I absolutely hate it, but I absolutely love it. We've kind of started to develop a, a bit of a love-hate relationship with this thing. And as you can see, we've already kind of started some work on it, but don't worry, we'll, we'll bring it along for the journey of that. But first off, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of you guys and as you know my last um, episode that I put out was pretty much just saying that hey I'm taking a break um, not feeling too well mental health wise and um, to reach out to your mates and have a chat um, and the response that we got or I got from that video was absolutely amazing there's currently over 115 comments on there of people just reaching out and saying yep sweet as man you take your time or people just sharing their stories about how they don't feel right as well and I think it's absolutely very important that um, blokes my age and, and any bloke really can actually speak up and say, hey, guess what guys? I'm not feeling okay. I need a friend. I need to have a chat. And that is absolutely not a weakness. And that was made evident in the comments that you guys left behind. You were so open and so sharing and so caring. It was just great to have that conversation with you all. And um, unfortunately I wasn't able to uh, respond to every single comment. So I can't put a little bit pin there that just kind of said, hey, Thank you so much guys for being awesome. Um, and yeah, I, I still stand by that. If you're not feeling well, or if a mate's not feeling well and reach out to you, have a conversation, man. It's, it is so cool. I had personal email, um, private messages and emails coming to me as well, of people reaching out with their stories and how they felt and, and also how watching my videos has pulled them out of a tough spot. And I, I just am so honored to have that happen and that you guys feel that way. So thank you so much for your care and consideration and absolutely it is not a weakness to speak up in today's day and age and say i'm not feeling okay so anyway moving on from that again thank you so much into the storage today we are going to start putting in like thousands of dollars worth of parts that are brought for this thing that have been sitting around as you can see it's sitting on the ground it's got wheels it's got tires but we'll, we'll get to that soon um <coughs> I gotta dry them up. It's so hot today. It's like 40 odd degrees today, man. It's crazy. So yeah, it's sitting on the ground. And what was I gonna say next? I was gonna say, oh gosh. I'm so excited. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So what I was gonna say was that yes, the car is sitting on the ground. It's no longer precariously placed on a trailer. We actually get underneath it and work on it safely. Um, but before we get into all of this, let's go on a 1300 kilometer journey to go find some rims. And no, I'm not joking, we really went that far. <laughs> and well, here we have it. We have gone and got ourselves another vehicle. Now, before you go all like you've got too many cars as it is, just bear with me here because this one is different. And why it's different is because I didn't find it, I actually paid for it. Yeah, this is the first car in a long time I've actually paid for. Um, so this is a VC Valiant Ute, Wayfarer, uh, Wayfarer Ute, uh, which is kind of interesting because Wayfarer is actually a term for someone who likes to walk everywhere. Is that kind of alluding to its reliability or something? I'm not too sure. But anyway, um, VC Valiant Wayfarer, but what this has that our Dodge 106C doesn't have is windows. It has every single window in it. It also has a full set of wheels, which the rear ones are really spicy. We'll show you those soon. It has a radiator, which hopefully we can salvage. It's got the complete engine, free speed manual transmission, um, and many other little bits and pieces in here that we can use to continue restoring the Dodge 106C. So really looking forward to it. Um, it's pretty windy here, so we'll head to our accommodation for the night and um, get into some shelter, and then we'll have a good look around this vehicle. Okay, so here we are parked up at our main space for the night and we've got much more shelter here so we can actually record and not be blown away. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's start talking about this wonderful, wonderful uh, VC Valiant Wayfarer Ute that we have gone and purchased. Now, what I didn't explain to you guys was that yes, I did buy this vehicle and I paid the princely sum of $165 for the whole car, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. And I'm absolutely particularly chuffed about that because that windscreen there, I was prepared to pay $169 just for the windscreen. But for $165, we have the entire car, all the windows, four wheels, a new motor, oh, not a new motor, sorry, another motor, free speed gearbox. Oh, mate. Okay, so let's go around this and pick out the parts that we will be using. First off, the wheels, okay? Now, this was set up 
as an old shooting rig, uh, according to the last owner, which does explain why you've got this massive roll bar here and why you have these absolutely ginormous wheels on the rear. Look, that's my hand. That is a massive tire for this thing. So those will be going, but those are 14 inch rims in there, I think. M50-4, 14. So I'm guessing those are, yeah, 14 inch rims. Um, they just look so big because of how beefy those tires are. Absolutely monstrous. Man, this thing would have been awesome to watch chasing around a few kangaroos and what have you, a few mates hanging off the back there. Anyway, so those um, rims we'll be using, we'll throw out the tires and we'll get some brand new tires going on those. Uh, and of course the glass. We have every single pane of glass that we need. None of it is cracked, none of it is smashed. And that is absolutely, absolutely awesome. Okay, coming around the back for other usable parts that we can use. Uh, the tailgate, now we did get a tailgate from our other little bush adventure, but this one has a panel on the inside, whereas the one we found, this is missing, because this linkage was broken up in here, so someone's pulled all this off to fix the linkage, and never put this panel back on. And they never fixed the linkage either, so anyway. So now we have a complete tailgate, whoops, does have a few dents in that in it, so which tailgate we'll use, I'm not too sure yet, but at least we have the infill panel there. Uh, this lower corner, we might be able to use that if it's not too thin. Um, but the rest of the body, rust-wise, oh, this thing's pretty bad. Um, I was really hoping to use the floors. But as you can see, they're, um, they're gone already. So there's nothing really usable out of that. Now, the other goodies. Free speed shifter. Very homemade, very hack job. But there is componentry in there that can be reused to make another floor shifter, which is really, really cool. So, plenty of cobwebs in here. Um, again, not a just enormous tire. I can't get over the size of those, man. Absolutely massive. Um, we've got a spare set of handles over here, which is great. Um, another door, what's the sills like on that? Oh, that's pretty good. That's better than the other door that we pulled off out in the bush. So, if we have to replace the whole door, because remember, my one's got a bullet hole through here, and all of this has exploded, um, so if they don't pass that door at the inspection, we'll chuck this door in. This is looking a lot better condition. Uh, anything else inside that's going on? Oh, quite amusing. The dash has been wrapped in um, Duracell. You know what you wrap your books in when you go to school? You know, you start a new term, or you start a new year, and you, you go out with your mum and you buy your brand new books. Well, that's what they've wrapped the dash in. <laughs> Either that or that stuff you put in your pantry. Oh, yep. So... Um, another dash cluster assembly there, which is great. A better condition steering wheel. That is um, more complete than the one I currently have in the Dodge. Um, oh, and the rear view mirror. Yes, there's a rear view mirror. That's exciting. I'm trying to... <coughs> All right. Come around the front here while we got that. That's in pretty good condition too, that fender. What's the front? Oh, they're all stoved in the front here. Why is every VC that I'm finding stoved right in there that corner very uh, you know kind of interesting all right let's have a look in here now the first thing you notice about this that is the original block it is it the original block yep three freeze plugs so that matches the year of the um, car uh single barrel carb which is correct there's only had the 140 horsepower option um but extractors and you look at them and go yes extractors baby but they've been sitting in the open for far too long and there is not much left of them. They will take a lot of work. Oh, I can just hear the rust creaking in them. They are shot useless. Uh, wiring loom. There actually is a wiring loom in here. Now, this has got no bonnet and it's got no keys. Um, it's been sitting in the guy's paddock for about 15 years, I think you said. I'll have to double check on that. Um, and so all the wires were exposed. So we can't use the wiring loom at the front but at least we can use it as a guide on how to rebuild a new one if we have to. Um, hopefully the wiring loom from the firewall backwards is all usable because mine's completely gone. Window wipers! Um, the Dodge doesn't have window wipers and a radiator. Hopefully that works. If not, we'll have to go get it um, cleaned up. A new radiator for these are like almost a thousand dollars. So if we can get that fixed for a couple hundred bucks, that will be absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've got a coil there, we've got an alternator. Hopefully we can get that to work as well because none of the engines I have have an alternator on them. Uh, we've got a complete dizzy down there, which is unusual as well. 
Man, the things you find when you actually buy a car instead of just finding them in the bush. Uh, chrome bumper, which we don't want. We want to keep the painted or the rusted uh, Dodge bumper. That was one of the main differences between a Dodge and a VC Valiant Wayfarer. Wayfarer. Speaking of that, would you guys like to know the difference between a Dodge 106C and a VC Valiant Wayfarer Ute? Yes? Excellent. Good, I'm going to tell you anyway. So, the main difference is the mechanically they are exactly the same same body same mechanical same drive line free speed on the tree 140 horsepower single barrel um carburetor uh 14 inch rims the main differences come in with the chroming of the front bar the dodges were not chromed they were only painted uh the wayfarer got the chrome there the other difference is this chrome around the window and the chrome up here the wayfarer badge that's all valiant only the dodge never got that again the point of the dodge was for fleet buyers and farmers keep the cost low they didn't need anything flashy they just needed a ute the other difference which is now gone because now we have these massive tires as we've always known the vc ute has got a 1200 pound uh, low capacity whereas the dodge has a 1500 pound low capacity now looking over some original sales brochures the only difference between the two to achieve that is the tire size they both use the six pack leaf spring. They both have a 14 inch tire, but the Dodge got an extra ply, I think it was. I'm not too good at reading um, cross ply tires, but they are slightly stronger tires. And that is the only reason that a Dodge can carry 200 extra pounds, uh, 300 extra pounds, sorry. Um, that's it. And now that's now gone because we've got these big meaty tires on this one and we'll be putting brand new tires on anyway. So um, the other differences, are, yes, the other big one too. That there, the Valiant logo, um, that is not present on the Dodge. Besides that, it is exactly, exactly the same as what you see here. So now if that little history lesson over between the differences and why we have this one and why we have another vehicle and why I actually paid for it as opposed to finding it, um, mainly because of that glass, I need that glass. Um, so yeah, let's get it home now. We are 600, almost 700 kilometers away from home, uh, back towards Perth, back to civilization, hence why you find better cars in that regard. Um, just take it back out to the bush and uh, yeah, we'll start pulling parts off it. And well, here we go. We are back home safe and sound, and it is time now to do some work on the Valiant. It's been a couple of days since our 1,300 kilometer round road trip um, to go pick up a vehicle that effectively, all we're going to be using are the rims and the glass. That was a long drive for some glass. Anyway, it was well worth it. Now, some brand new tires have shown up because these ones, as you can see, are well and truly past their use by date. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna jack up one corner at a time take the rim off, replace the tire, put the tire and rim back on. So then we can actually roll this vehicle off the trailer nicely where it needs to live. And then we'll take all the wheels off it and put it onto our Dodge and then take the Dodge back home. So then we can start putting the engine out, which is still in the engine block that's in there, still out. Drop the K frame, replace all suspension components. This might take more than just this one video, but that's my train of thought. Um, let's start changing these tires. Let's just start at the beginning. So I still cannot get over the size of these rear wheels that were on the back of them. I mean, just look at the width. This is absolutely incredible. But as I said, this was used as a shooting rig. Uh, we've since found out it's got some air shocks on the rear as well, which I dare say will be long uh, uh, useless by now by sitting in the paddock out in the open. So um, as you can see, though, the sidewall kind of goes well past the bead of the rim there. And we can't get onto the tire machine and pop the... Uh, to actually you know get the levers in there and and pull it off like we have to um so what we're going to do is we're just going to shortcut that with a grinder so yeah we're just going to cut it off it's going to be much easier hopefully There we go. 
There. Easy. Mm, one rim. I think a few patches will fix that. No. No? Oh, okay. I don't think so. Don't, okay. Oh, well, there we go. We've got a... No, that's going to come off by hand. So you have to unscrew that tube by hand. But man, that's a decent tyre, right? Like a sidewall on that. Bloody ass. Alright, we'll give this one a bit of a bashing. There's a few straight edges around here. We'll bash them out. Oh, clean that rust out. That's a bit concerning. Oh, yeah. Get this off. We don't need this anymore. Nope. Um, yeah, a little bit of a clean and that'll come up alright. That's a bit concerning there. Yeah. Cool. That's one done. Next. Alright, so we've managed to mount up our 23560 by 14 on the original rim. And what we've just found out, unfortunately, is we have a slew leak here. So you can see there's a bit of a bend there in the edge of the rim. So we'll just set the tire off and we'll bash that across. But also around here, there's a small pinhole in the um, in the bead itself there of the rim. And I was just gonna again when we take the tire off, we'll pull a little tack of the welder there. So unfortunately these rims will probably not be usable for the street um, but at least we can pull it on the Dodge and get the Dodge rolling and moving and um, actually get some work done to it which is what today is all about. So we'll take the tire off, bash that, weld that and uh, keep going and we'll let you know if there's any more issues. Oh and there, yeah. Okay that's really bad there. So okay, bash that out as well. Rebuild the bush car they said. It'll be awesome they said. Oh, yeah, well, God knows how old, ancient, dry, rotted tyres say otherwise. Anyway, it's on wheels. How awesome does that look now? So that was a lot of effort. That was about two hours or more just trying to get the old tyres off to put them onto the old parts car. And I haven't even got them onto the car. They go, oh, my, okay, it's hot. I'm delusional. Let's just have a look around. Check out that. Now, they're not as fat as the uh, tyres that came off, but... They definitely look more appropriate, which is going to be awesome. So, yes, our tyres do hold air. Now, um, the blue one was the easiest one to take off. The rest of them were a pain in the rear end. Um, what I do have to show you, though, on this one, we had to do a little bit of repair jobs to it. Uh, as you saw, we had to bash out there and there and um, put a little tack in there. So we did take it from the other side and built it up a little bit from where the rust had corroded, pretty much from here all the way around to about here somewhere. So... Um, I dare say this is going to have a slow leak in it, but only time will tell and we'll be able to fix that later on. So who knows, if they hold air for more than a day or a week, ideally, um, they might be streetable tire, uh, rims. So let's see how they go. So um, yeah, a few of them had blooming tubes in them, which is a pain. And yeah, we had to put the saws all through the big suckers to get them off because there was no way that we were going to get them off on the machine any way possible. And then this one, we had to do this is from the passenger side we had to chop off the flat spot so that we could actually get onto the machine and get the teeth to grab onto the rim itself and then this little sucker while well, he was the easiest he came off just like a normal tire should so now we take our wonderful little parts car here we go stick it in the yard there somewhere and then we'll jack it up take the wheels off pull onto the dodge let's go do that now damn it I left my car in a paddock for half an hour and I've lost my wheels. Just shocking, I tell you man, you can't trust no one these days. No, I'm just joking, they're over here. Look at that, our Dodge is on wheels for the first time in gosh knows how many years. As far as we know, this car was abandoned on the station in 1994, or well, that's when it was last registered anyway. And now look at it, sitting nicely on those 23560s on the back. 20570s on the front. Uh, rolling diameter is only out by a couple of mils, so nothing too serious, uh, especially just for a little hack like this. Anyway, it's on there. Now, as you notice, you may have noticed, the front wheels have kind of decided to go their own direction. Yeah, so the steering arms aren't connected. That made this uh, quite a mission to get up and onto the trailer. Um, but that's okay, we got there in the end with the help of a forklift and a jack and all sorts of contraptions. We got it on there, so now we can get it home and replace all of that suspension. Every single ball joint, every single uni joint, everything is going to be replaced. So I'm really looking forward to that now. Um, to start that, we have to get it home. Uh, obviously put the steering arms in so we can get it off the trailer properly. Uh, lift the block out. Anyway, you'll see it. Let's just go home 
and get it done. Oh, I am so, so excited. This is a huge step. Um, trying to get wheels and tires for this car has been a bit of an ordeal. So this is why I'm so excited to finally have it sitting up on its own feet. And it looks wonderful. Those tires fit the arches just nicely. Not too low, not too fat, just great. Anyway, let's get home. I'm excited. Isn't this a great sight? The Dodge is back in the carport, ready to have some work done, but it's on the ground. It is no longer sitting up precariously on the trailer. I can actually get underneath it now safely once it's up on some axle stands and have a good look underneath there. Now I've already had a bit of a squeeze and there is quite a bit more rust under there than I anticipated, but I'm gonna worry about that when it comes time to do the bodywork. For now, I really just want to slap the front end of this car together, which we have already started to do. We've already pulled out the remainder of what's driveline was in this thing. So someone's already taken the free speed off here a long time ago, left the bell housing and clutch assembly and the block. Don't know where the head's gone. That was nowhere near the wreck when we found the car. And now we have a beautifully open, empty engine bay where we can start pulling out all of our K-frame and suspension, all of our steering components and replace it with all the brand new parts and refurbished parts and adapt our sway bar onto here as well. So really looking forward to getting this done and getting some of these brand new parts finally put onto this Dodge. If we get time today, I wanna to get that all finished and done so we have some steering and our front ends all together. And if we have time, I would like to get the rear bushes and shocks in as well. But we'll see how we go. It's pretty warm today. It's in the, uh, the low to mid 40s. So we take it nice and easy and we will get there. So I'm gonna pop you on time lapse now and we're just gonna smash this all out. Let's get into it. hot today it is touching 40 degrees and i'm out here dropping a blaze subframe out of the front of a dodge for your entertainment anyway what have we done what well, you saw in the time lapse we have now got the entire subframe steering and everything out of the front of this car except for uh upper control arms because that bolt is being a bugger and i need to go buy myself a new sawzall to cut through there um because i sort of burnt my one out um, and the other side, I haven't attempted to take it out yet. We just gotta take the shock out of there as well. Um, but otherwise, that whole front end is completely dropped, ready for our new front end to go in. Now, if you remember, we took the front end out of the VF Pacer out of the Speedway, the Speedway VF Pacer, as we were calling it. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? And we were gonna drop that entire subframe and front end into our Dodge here so we could take advantage of the stronger later model design of the K-frame itself. <coughs> so again, plus also, <laughs> Um, it has a provision for a sway bar, front sway bar, which came on the pace of models. So I was really looking forward to that. But let's go into the shed and I'll show you why that might be a slight problem. And here we go. On the left, we've obviously got our one we've just pulled out of the Dodge. And then this one is our Speedway VF Pacer one that we've um, pulled out, cleaned up and repainted looking smicko. 
Now, I wanted to use this one because obviously being a laser model, it's a stronger design. It's um, two complete pieces of metal that have been stamped and then welded together, which makes it, in my opinion, a lot stronger and a better design. Um, a lot stronger to where the engine mounts go onto. Whereas this one is uh, one, two, three, four, it's multiple different pieces of steel, uh, C-channel steel that's been welded together in various places. And then um, obviously our engine mounts here don't quite have the same amount of um, structure in them as these ones do. So I was really looking forward to using this. Now, <laughs> th th there is a problem with this. Now they look absolutely identical in the way that they um, bolt up to the car. But if we take, bring this one over and then flip this one upside down on top. Okay, I'll line up the holes on this side. Some of you may already see the issue we're having here. Right, these holes are lined up-ish, whereas these holes are way out. It turns out from, you got two different generations here, right? This one is AP5 to VC. This one is VF to VF, and I think halfway through VG, I'm not sure on that. But I definitely know it's VE to VF. Somewhere along there, well, well somewhere between the VC and the VE, um, they widened the chassis rails and the torsion bar mounting boxes by an inch. Why? Why, Chrysler, did you extend the chassis rails by an inch? It doesn't make sense because engine options, okay, so this is what I thought. Okay, so they're both running a 225 slant 6. They did that right up until the VG. Um, V8 option, uh, the AP6 was the first Chrysler in Australia to come with a V8 option. That was a 273. And then the VE was the first one to get the 318, which saw service all the way through to the CM in 1981. So I thought, well, maybe there was a crossover there between the 273 being a smaller engine, and then they extended an inch to allow room for the 318 to go in. But that in itself doesn't really make sense because the 273 and the 318 are both LA blocks. They're the same structure, they're the same design, um, same mounting points. So I, you know, maybe, I'm not sure. Um, I'm clutching at straws here. I actually have no idea why, why they would increase the chassis rail by an inch. Now, if you're a Chrysler guru, guru out there and you know why, let us know because this is going to be perplexed. I was really looking forward to using this stronger design of subframe, but instead, we're just going to have to clean this one up and reuse the VC one. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. Anyway, moving on from that, we then have the original steering box and the one from the same pacer as that subframe. Now, uh, this one has been sitting in the dirt for gosh knows how long. And remember, this one was found upside down, so it's been sitting up in the air in much better condition. They're both pretty ratty and old and worn out, but this one's going to be a lot easier to clean up. Also, this one from lock to lock is uh, pretty much five turns, just under five turns, lock to lock, whereas this one is four and a half. So I think this one is a lot, a bit not a lot, but a bit tighter um, and less worn out than the original one. So from this assembly here, the only part we need to keep is this rod here that connects your right-hand side and your left-hand side. Everything else, oh, and that part there, everything else will be replaced with brand new pedal suspension components. Really looking forward to getting that in. Now, I was hoping to end this video on that, um, but that's going to be a bit hard now because I can't get that stuff frame in. Ah, the other thing too, this is a lower control arm from our Dodge, our VC chassis, and this one is a lower control arm from the same Speedway VF Pacer. Um, they're exactly the same. Their, their pickup point for the knuckle and their pin here for the torsion bar where it actually goes into the chassis, um, they're the same. So why do they put an inch of width into the chassis and leave the lower control arms and upper control arms the same length? I don't know. So the other bummer with having to use that 
is we're going to have to make custom mounts to run the sway bar. We can still run these lower control arms because they're exactly the same. Um, and then they've got the factory mount for the sway bar links. So what we'll do is we'll bolt it all in, we'll use those lower control arms, bolt the sway bar in as if it was going to be in there, hold it up to the front um, subframe and see if we can make tabs that will locate the front sway bar and that way we can keep that. So I would really like to run the B41 front disc brake option and the Pacer front sway bar. I think that'll be absolutely cool to run that in our Dodge Ute. I think that's everything I had to explain to you guys. Yeah, awesome, great. So we're going to end the episode there. Um, bit of a downer that we can't use that subframe, but also we have made some great progress on the Dodge. Um, I was getting really concerned that this thing was just sitting on the trailer and then sitting in the dirt for such a long time. To have it on wheels really is amazing. And then to finally start pulling apart that front suspension and whacking our new stuff in, I'm really, really looking forward to it. So stay tuned for another episode. And um, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. And the next upload might be a week, it might be two weeks, I'm not too sure. It's very hot, I can't work on these cars all the time. Um, yeah, thank you all for tuning in and I uh, hope to see you on the next episode of All The Move Carnage. See you later.